Automating Common eMonitor Processes Using Windows Task Scheduler In eMonitor, there are several common functions that users need to perform on a regular basis. Things like updating the current alarm severities, maybe calculated measurements, and in cases where online data is being automatically collected, such as from an XM system or a Dynamics 1444 or maybe even NWatch, when these data are being collected on a frequent schedule, it's particularly important to set and regularly enforce data storage and retention configurations to avoid excessively large data sets in the database that could degrade the performance of the system. These functions are all quite easy to execute manually, but many users find it convenient to run these operations automatically on a consistent schedule. In this video, we'll show you how to do this. Let's get started. Within the eMonitor application, you can right-click on pretty much any item and use the right-click process menu. And you can manually do things like update calculations, update alarm severities, uh, and intelligent advisories, for example. And there's an external utility uh, to do some of these things as well, including enforcing storage limits. The storage limits, as shown here, consist of two basic parts. They collect and store, which is a box where you tell the system under what conditions do you want to allow new data into the database. And this configuration is enforced at the time that data is being processed. And then the bottom box, storage limits. And here's where you tell eMonitor how long data should be retained once it does get into the database. And this is perhaps the most important part of the configuration to understand. The configuration in this box does not get processed automatically. Instead, uh, it requires you to either run the storage limit updater, which is that external utility I mentioned, or you can actually execute it with a uh, Windows scheduled tasks using a simple batch file. So one of the most important things is to understand specifically what the executables involved are. We're going to talk about three in particular. The alarm severity updater. The second one is going to be calculated measurements. And the last one will be enforcing your storage specifications. It's important to understand where these particular executables are located. So we'll go to the start button click on My Computer, and assuming that eMonitor is installed in the default location, on a 64-bit system, we will go into the x86 program files. If you were running a 32-bit system, you would go simply follow the same path only through the program files. This is important to keep in mind when you're constructing your batch file. So since this is a 64-bit system, we'll go through the program files x86, then we'll go to Rockwell Software, and then we'll go to eMonitor, and we will change the sort here to Details, and we'll click on Type so that our applications fall here at the top. So when we're talking about, in particular, the calculation updates, calculated measurement updates, those are controlled by the calc eng executable here. And when we want to do severity updates, we'll scroll down here to the S's, those are controlled by the SVRITY, an abbreviation of severity. That's the executable for that process. When we want to control uh, storage limits or enforce the storage limits, that is this particular STG limit executable here. And note the path that these executables are stored in. This path will be important to uh, articulate in the batch file. So we'll just minimize this. The first thing to understand when running any of these utilities is that we can run them against the entire database or we can run them against any subset of the database that we would like. Best practices suggestion would be to clearly define the specific parts of the database we want to run these processes against in order to avoid 
unintended consequences of possibly applying changes to the database that we uh, didn't mean to include. So the best way to do this is to use our tag options to create a list. So let's say in this example I want to process only the items under the Power Station North Area 2 Level 3 pay fan demo. And if I have multiple machines under this Area 2 Level 3, I want to get all those two. In this case, I only have the one. So what I'll do is I will select at the train level, Area 2 Level 3, just to get everything. In this case, it's really just the PA fan number one. But I'm going to select that train level and hit Tag. And if I look down inside here, you'll see that everything is now tagged. If I had multiple machines to find under this level, those items would also be tagged. Now we want to save this as a list. And we will go to our list menu and hit save. As a general rule, when we're using a saved list in a batch file, we want to keep the name of that list as simple as possible. So don't mix case, don't put special characters. Keep it simple. So we're going to call this one just simply auto update. And this will be our list name. So we'll say OK. And now we've created a list called auto update. Now, the easiest thing is to go into something like Notepad in order to define our batch file. So we've opened up Notepad and the very first batch file we're going to create is uh, an entry for processing the alarm severities. So what we can do is key in a very simple command here. So start followed by two sets of double quotes and then a forward slash followed by the wait command. Now the purpose of the wait command is to simply tell the system to not proceed to the next line of the batch file until this particular process has been completed. Now we're going to put in another double quote and we'll put in our path. So in this case, program files and since we're using a 64-bit system we will put a space and then a parenthesis x 86 parenthesis followed by another backslash and then we'll go to Rockwell whoops we need two L's there Rockwell software backslash e monitor backslash and then the name of the severity updater which is svrity dot exe and we'll complete that with another double quote. Now this particular utility requires us, to, if we want to, to name a list immediately following that double quote. So after the space, we'll put the list name, auto update. That will complete the processing uh, for the severity updates or alarm updates. Now if we want to do one to also enforce storage limits, on that same list, and it could be a different list if we specify a different list, but we'll use the same one. We'll put in another one of these lines, and I'm just going to copy this to make it easy. And we'll paste it, and I'm going to change the name of the executable to be STG limit. Now, as it turns out, the STG limit executable, uh, the syntax for the switch on this particular one is to put a forward slash followed by the word list and then a colon. Let's open this up just a little bit. All right, so the syntax is different for these two lines because of the uh, inconsistency in this particular um, utility as far as how, how the list is enumerated. Now again if I wanted to then add a third process in the same batch file you could put these in different batch files and schedule them with different schedules if it makes sense to do so. But 
If we want to do them all in one batch file and do one schedule, that's also fine. So I'll paste this in again. And this time I'm going to use the calc inge.exe. And this particular one uses the same syntax as storage limit. So I can just copy that part. In this case, I'll just retype it. Auto update. And that will enforce my any calculated measurements that I have defined. If you're not using calculated measurements, you don't need to include this line. And that's all there is to the batch file. And what we'll do is we'll have to save this. And I'm going to do file save as. Now in order for this to show up as a batch file to Windows, you have to be very careful how you name it. First of all, I'm just going to put this in the C drive. And then I'm going to use a double quote here and I'll call this auto process. And again, you can give this any name that makes sense to you. But I'll call this autoprocess.bat. And as long as it has a bat extension here, and I've used the double quotes, eMonitor will save this file name exactly as it's shown here. If I fail to put the quotes on this, it's simply a text file. So it's very important that we prefix and suffix the double quotes to our .bat file name. So now when I save this, if I go look now on the C drive, you will see that I have a file called auto process which Windows has correctly identified as a batch file. If I double click this file now, uh, eMonitor will be updated with those processes in the background. And just to show you how this works, if I were to change views here and go to my alarm panel view, you can see that my current alarm on this machine, or all the machines really, is to have a normal severity status. Now if we want to update that, we could come down here and say right click process update alarm severities. But we're going to do it with the batch file. So if I go back to this directory and I simply hit enter or double click on the batch file, it will process one line at a time. So right now it's updating the severities. Once the severity part is done, it will go to the storage limits and then it will go to the calc engine. Now to see what the changes were on the eMonitor side, I can hit the F5 key to refresh. And you can see I now have alarm status updates that were not there before. So we did all three processes with a single batch file, but I still had to execute the batch file. Now to fully automate this process, we can do that using Windows Scheduled Tasks. To do that, let's go to Start and then the Control Panel. Now, assuming you're using the default Control Panel view here, you will go to System and Security. And then down here under Administrative Tools, you'll see Scheduled Tasks. You can also just search for Scheduled Tasks. And that'll accomplish the same thing. When you open the Task Scheduler, this is the window you typically see by default. Now the easiest thing is to just simply create basic task. If you choose create task, it gives you a few more options right up front. We don't necessarily need all those options, so we're going to create basic task. So by clicking on that, we are then presented with our basic task wizard. So we'll just give it a name and we'll call this eMonitor Auto Process, any name that makes sense and then we will click Next. Now because we're doing the basic task wizard, the shortest duration that we can run this on is daily, which is probably what we would recommend. You want to run this at least once daily. In cases where it makes sense to run the process more than once daily, you would want to go into the properties afterwards, in which case you have additional configuration options on the scheduling. But in this case, we'll just say once daily is sufficient, which is the case for most people. I'm going to run this once every, to recur once every single one day, and then I'll give it a time to start on. Now typically, uh, especially with alarm updates and, and uh, storage limit updates, 
those processes can create a fair amount of uh, process uh, utilization on the database server. So we would recommend that you run these at a time when the system is undergoing light use. So perhaps we might say uh, you know, 11.38 p.m. And we'll just run it daily at 11.38 p.m. I'll click Next. And then I'm going to say, what do I want to do when the schedule is, is uh, attained here? So I want to start a program. And I'm going to browse for that program. In this case, it's our batch file. So it shows up here in our C drive auto process. So here's my auto process dot bat. I don't need to give it any arguments. So I'll click next and then I can finish. Now if I want to look at some of the extended properties when I'm done I could check this box here. We'll go ahead and do that just to show you some options here that may be important for your particular install. And We'll click finish and the properties come up for this particular uh, scheduled task. One thing to note is I've currently got it set to run only when the user is logged on. I'm running it as a local administrator. In order for this to be successful you do need to run this typically with elevated privileges. Uh, local admin is, is definitely uh, highly recommended. Um, some other things that you can get into under, uh, uh, under triggers on the triggers tab. If I go in and edit this um, I do have the option of going in here now and repeating this say every hour or every four hours or whatever makes sense. I would want to point out here that in large installations where you're updating large chunks of the database, for example, the severity update uh, and the storage limit in particular can take a long time to run. It would not be unusual for these processes to take upwards of anywhere from five minutes to even an hour in a, an extremely large database. In, in the case where let's say the alarm updates or the storage limit updates take let's say 30 minutes to process so that command prompt window that opens up when the batch file is executed takes approximately 30 minutes to process before it goes away and completes. We would not want to schedule this task to start every 30 minutes because the system is going to be in a constant state of heavy uh, processing utilization. And we want to avoid that. So uh, do take note when you run the scheduled task the first time. Um, and by the way, if this is the first time that you've ever actually run the storage limit updater, that first time you run that can be the longest duration. So you might want to run that even a second time to get a, a more realistic a representation of how long it takes to complete. Um, usually on subsequent executions, its execution time is much shorter. But once you know how long the batch file takes to execute on average, then you have a much better idea of what is the shortest interval that you might be able to get away with scheduling that process to run um, without overtaxing your system. And again, if you're just doing this once a day, then all of that is uh, really not a non-issue. So we'll click OK here. And now that process is scheduled in our scheduled task library to run on the schedule that we, that we configured. And that's really all there is to it. So I hope you found this particular topic useful. There are many e-monitor topics available on video now, and we are adding new topics all the time. And we hope this helps you get the most out of your e-monitor system. Thanks for joining us.